I I feel like I have wanted to set up a brand new notebook for a while, but couldn't <laughs> couldn't uh, justify it. When I had room in my old one, I could not justify going to the new one yet. But with the new year here, I have an excuse. It's a good one too. Now, granted, I will say that the new notebook that I'm moving to, well, the old one still has, what does it have in it? It's not a lot. I'm not wasting a ton here. It has, it has, it has, it has 25 pages I have not used in it. Yeah, I hope they work out well too, Michael. Oh, I do have, I didn't get a pen. All right, so here's the thing. I did not get any pens for Christmas. However, I did get a pencil. I have it here with me. Uh, let's, let, let me just, let's do that. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna get to, get to things fairly quickly here. Let me get this stuff out of the way. So this, block that. I know, no pins, sad day. <laughs> All right. So this, I have wanted this for a long time. And I mentioned it to my wife, if that'll focus. Come on, camera. You got to do it for me. Sometimes it does it better if I do this. Don't know why. Um, this is a Cura Toga Advance. And so it's a mechanical pencil. And the beauty of this is that as you push down and write with it, it auto advances. So it will then progress the, the lead out the end as you press on it so that those light presses will auto advance it. So I'm a fan. I have not used it for anything substantial yet, but my mother-in-law picked out the color and all that, Carol. She's fantastic. Actually, oh, I don't have it here. I will wear it for stream one time. She has given me a t-shirt. I don't know if this will focus if I just do this. Uh, it's trying. How close do I have to get to you? It's not gonna go. Oh, there it goes. You can kind of see. So that silver part advances whenever you... So like that's the way you would carry it. And then when you press it the first time, it brings that out. And you can see the ink, the lead come out from there. Yep. So anyway, my mother-in-law got me a t-shirt. I am not going to remember all the words on it, but basically it's, I have a freaking awesome mother-in-law, so I'm living the dream. Like that's what the t-shirt says from my mother-in-law. So I'll have to wear it sometime. I have another one that I'll wear at some point too that my wife got me, but we'll get there. All right, let's get into this because this is why we're all here. So this is my old one. I think it'll be helpful to just let me take you through the way that I have this laid out and then I'll step you through what I'm changing and we'll actually set up the new one over here. I'm not going to show it to you yet. You lifers would know exactly what it is though. The only real question is the color. All right, so let's dive into this. I'm going to start with the index here, okay? Now, this is going to stay. I, I don't know how you would run a bullet journal without this. To me, trying to do this without an index is absurd. Now, the problem that I ran into here is that the future log that you start with is one that I have not used a lot in the past. All right, so it's one that I've struggled to to dive into too deep. Now, before let me let me just before I get too far here, let me just point out that if bullet journaling and analog stuff is your thing, check out analogjoe.com. 
we're going to be talking about this sort of thing a little bit um, in our next webinar session, which is going to be a week from Wednesday. I think it's a week from Wednesday. Um, and also, if you're big into this stuff, I have people on that do workflows and take us through their systems. And the next guy I have on the list, I have it booked. February 10th, I believe, is the date. Jeff Sheldon of UggMonk has the analog card system. He's going to come talk to us about it. So that's an upcoming deal. That is a paid community. So just full disclosure there. All right. This. This index is staying. The future log, historically, I shouldn't say historically, this is the canonical way that you do that. So if you're just getting started with bullet journaling, this is the way that Ryder Carroll's website will walk you through setting that up. I have May, June, July, August, September, October here. You can see how awesome I am at using this. Not my thing. This is this is not the layout that I like. It, it just doesn't work for me, and I, I don't know why. I think some of that is that the future log concept itself doesn't work too well for me. So it's one that I've never gravitated to at least since I've been bullet journaling, which has been since April. So yes, started bullet journaling in April of 2020. And this is the first time I'm actually migrating to a new notebook with it. So here we are. So I'm not setting up this way. I will show you the way that I'm going to set it up uh, here in a bit. But anyway, this is the future log setup. Um, Obviously, the index pieces, I will show you. The goal today is we'll set up a future log for 2021. We will set up January's monthly spreads. And I have two, I think it's two. Yes, I have two lists that I am going to migrate over as well. All right. And uh, we'll get into those uh, as well. Now, the monthly spread piece that I'm going to be migrating looks like this. I've been slowly iterating on this since April. Uh, those of you who have set up your notebooks with me know how I do this. But it's pretty straightforward. This is your standard monthly log. December, I was not good about filling it out. I've had some where I'm pretty good. Uh, where's November 160? Yeah, this one's not too bad. I got light towards the end. It's the week of Thanksgiving, though. So I wasn't doing a ton that week. This is the same. All right, so this, um, let me get these over here so I can see them. This is your traditional monthly log. So you're just logging a sing single thing that happens that day. That's all it is. Now, that is followed by the Franken log. And again, I've talked about this in the past, but it's pretty straightforward. These are all the days of the month. The numbers here correspond with the items over here. All right. Pardon me. So each of these can be repeated multiple times. The easy one that I can see off the top of my head uh, right now is this number nine, 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 nine. Corresponds to what? Oh, trim beard. I didn't intend that. That seems to be the one I grab a lot. And I don't intend to. So these are like my repetitive routine tasks that I do pretty regularly. Uh, Frankenlog, that's just the way that this is set up. It's a way of handling recurring tasks. So these two are gonna stay. I like this layout. Previously, I had this monthly log followed by like my tracker here on this page, and I didn't like that. So I've enjoyed having these split like this. Now, let me start on this side. Um, this last time around, so for the month of December, I went to this split layout for my habit tracker. The ones below the legend there, so these are the days of the month, 1 through 31. The ones below it are the ones that I intend to do every single day. You can see how good I am at some of these. The last couple months have been really bad for my exercise journal meditate bank. So... Those are ones that I try to do every single day. You can see I actually added a couple within the month. I started taking a vitamin D, being in Minnesota, that's helpful. Helpful. So I started taking a vitamin D every day. I started doing that on the 7th. 
of December. And then I also started tracking my consumption of kombucha, which is a fermented tea of sorts. So we make our own kombucha, so, you know, crunchy hippie types. Uh, but I started tracking when I drink that, because there are periods when I'll go four, five, seven days without that. And I just want to know, does that change my, like, the headache side of things? Because the stuff up here is all the, just, I would like to know if it happened that day. Just so I can keep an eye on how is this affecting sleep? How is it affecting, like, migraines, ADD? Like, I just want to know. So it's kind of a, a tracker of sorts of if it happened that day. And you can obviously see, we get around Christmas time here. So Christmas is dead center right here. You can see a cluster of dots right there. It's because liquor and wine and stuff, like, I tend to drink alcohol a little bit more around holidays just because we're around and not going anywhere. So, makes sense. Kombucha on tap. Nice. We basically do. We have two one-gallon jars that we make it at home. <laughs> So, total nerds. All right, so there's that. The top side of this, people like this. Um, I haven't deviated from this since about day one of my bullet journaling. And it's sleep, mood, stress. So the solid line here is my indicator of how well I'm getting eight hours of sleep. You can see that actually varies quite a bit. I've been pretty good lately until last night. Last night was not good. Thus, a little extra coffee today. So, that's my sleep. The dashed line, which I know it's kind of hard for you to see here, uh, is my stress levels, and that tends to be inversely proportional, inversely related to mood levels. So, as my stress goes up, my mood tends to go down and vice versa. Just the way I operate. So, that's that. That's that tracker. I added this one which is what time did I go to go to bed versus what time roughly did I fall asleep? That actually has been kind of nice to know because it does show me like if I have a bad night, like you can see here last night, I went to bed at a good time, but I didn't fall asleep till a little after, like I was in bed for over 45 minutes before I fell asleep. That's what that tells me. Not great. Not for me. I'm usually a five to seven minute person and fall asleep. That's usually what I am when I go to bed. So that tells me it's a pretty rough night. It happens. It does. So anyway, it's good to know that piece. Now, these pieces that you see here, things I'm waiting for, things to remember, and adjustments to make. I actually don't have any adjustments this time. I think this is the first time I've had where I want to just straight up repeat what I did in my bullet journal. I will also say that like this past month, has been hectic enough that I haven't thought much about it. It's just not a thing that I've spent some time trying to determine, am I going to make some changes to? I've just been like, just keep me above water. That's what I've been trying to do with it. All right, that's those. And then the last page of my monthly spreads are these tasks and project lists. And uh, they're just things that don't make it into the daily logs and I need to keep track of them. I'm not always that great at keeping an eye on these, but it is helpful to have that list. I will say that this is probably about to be used a little bit more than I have been. And I say that because at my day job, we just hired an assistant for me. So Joel, which is gonna get confusing, Joe and Joel, he is a uh, helping me with like some of the weekly routine tasks of like setting up stage and posting things online. Like he's doing a lot of those so that I can focus on the bigger projects, which means this list actually may get longer from a work stance. So there's that. All right, so that's gonna stay the same. Now, I, I just wanna point out, I'm not gonna stop too much here. There are some other pages in here, like gifts to buy. Uh, this one's probably easy because I'm going to migrate this one. Books to read. I haven't been great about keeping up on this, but I do have some in here that we haven't uh, made it to for bookworms. So I keep track of like my book list there. That I'm going to migrate over. I know that's kind of an, a question mark when you go to a new notebook. Should you 
migrate all your stuff over to that new notebook? I would say no, but I will start numbering my books. So this will just be book one. So if I need to reference a page in a different book, it'll just be one dash, whatever the page number is. That's my intention for how to migrate it. But this is not such a long list that I can't easily migrate that over. Now I'm not gonna take you through actually writing all that stuff because I don't wanna waste your time doing that. Um, but that one and like my list of content ideas. So videos, streams, webinars, people to talk to for Analog Joe. Like these are all things that I intend to keep track of. Thus, I've got a list for them. Those two are the ones I'm gonna migrate over and I'm going to put them before my January spreads. So I'm gonna set up the future log first and then I'll put those two and then I'm gonna start my January spreads. And I'm only doing that because I want those two to be very quick to find. I don't want them to be a few pages in. I want them to be ones that I use regularly. That's kind of my intention here is that I want to make the ones easily accessible that I don't, that I want to use more. So it's kind of a way of encouraging myself to use them. You just got lead yourself first today. I have it right here. It's a good one, I think. I think. We'll see. You'll have to wait till Friday to find out my true thoughts on it. <laughs> no spoilers here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, that all said, um, overall layout on the way I operate, I mean, you can see like these are my daily logs. I've got one for each day. Sometimes, let's see if I can find one. I have had periods where I'm better than others about, looks like I'm mostly bad at it. That's interesting. Yeah, I've had days like this where I do a journal entry after that. So this was my day and then I would do a journal entry. Did one there too, uh, for that specific day. It was more than a one liner for the month. So I do that on occasion. I would like to do that more, but I'm not great. So anyway, these will all continue now. I'm going to continue using this notebook until the new year because everything will get switched over to the January spreads at that time and I'll do an actual migration on New Year's Day. Okay? Now, that's the old one. Let's look at the new notebook. And I will preface this with, this was given to me by a friend who purchased this and then decided he didn't like it. So he gave it to me knowing that I love them. So this might be kind of hard to see, but like you can see some of the where, like for me, I can see like there's stains here, there's scratches and stuff along here that you can't really see on camera, but it's pretty obvious if you were to see it in person. Um, it's pretty beat up on the corners. This thing, this gets thrown. <laughs> in so many places. Uh, these are both the exact same notebook. It's a Loic term 1917, okay? And I'm a fan of them because they come with the index pages already set up, ready to go. Part of me likes that they don't have the English first, if you can read that. So it ends up being second on those. But I like them because they're pre-numbered pages, like you can see here, if I flip out. Um, so the pre-numbered pages, they're dot grid. It's fairly unobtrusive. I'm a fan. And I think, yeah, they all come with, if I can get this out, stickers uh, for the spine. And then if you wanna put these on the inside, you can do that as well. So yeah. That's what I got. So let's set up the future log here on this one. We'll start the build of this brand new notebook. Okay, so we're gonna start. Let me get these ribbons where I want them. Now I never use page one because to me it's a bit of a nuisance to have it there. Now. 
I've said that because traditionally, whenever I set these up, I've always used the folded, like the full spread left and right whenever I set these up. And I don't intend on doing that this time. So I am going to use this on page one, which from a numbering stance helps my OCD brain feel much, much better. Coffee. So we're gonna set up the future log here. Now, those of you who are on Team Analog, a part of AnalogJoe.com, you know there are a lot of ways you could set up this future log. You could do it Ryder Carroll's way where you split this into six pages or six sections and do each month. Now, I've been slowly using my bullet journal for more and more things. So I expect that I'm going to burn through this notebook in six months or less. That's my intent. So that said, it means that I will need this to cover at least six months, preferably nine. So I'm gonna set it up for nine months and I'm gonna do it on a single page. The way I'm gonna do that, let me grab this other one because I did set this up in my other notebook like this, all right? This is called the Alistair method. So you put the months across the top and then your items down the left with the day of that month, all right? So in this case, like I know, Hazel's birthday, December 11th, it's my youngest daughter, turn four. I don't know how that happened. My baby turned four. So I know that whenever I go to December, I can run down this, look for the X's, and then I'm good to go from there. Uh, teaser, this is called the Kalindex method. Have not been using that at all. I put these at the back of my notebook thinking I would use them more and didn't. So there's that. <laughs> so I'm gonna set up this method right here, very first page, because that'll hopefully keep that future log dead center for me. And I have learned that I really like using my colors for headers. So here we go. And if I follow the handwriting methods that I taught everyone on Team Analog, Okay, future log. Now, here, let's, let's go ahead and do this so that I do not forget. It's on page one. It has been christened. All right, now let's put these in here. So this is, let's see. The Alistair works for you, Michael? Yeah, I. the folks that I've run across that do a lot of bullet journaling seem to really like it for a future log. Like, yes, people like the, all, the um, Kalindex system or the Franken log, but... The Alistair seems to be pretty solid. What's with that? All right. Now, the key with this, generally you would think, okay, January, February, March, April, but actually I'm going to start it at February because there is no point in me putting January there because I'm going to be starting in January. So... I wouldn't be tracking anything in January here anyway. So I'm gonna start it with February. I gotta think of where that needs to land. February. The first page is profound. Good old Merlin man. Welcome, Revival. Thanks for the follow. What have I got? Four, May, 
June, July. One, two, three, four, five, six. September, October. All right, that gets me nine months. So if I've got the nine months there, in theory, that'll get me past the six month or whenever I get to a new notebook. That way my future log is always on the first page. So my hope is that I would never be in a situation where my future log would be in two places at one time. How did I do that? Like from a... Okay, so I did do it that way. I was trying to remember, like, how did I do the lines there? On the dots. Side one. Side two. All right. Future log is ready to go. Oh, I should point this out because pin people. Pilot high tech C. One of the best, well, my opinion, the best small point, fine point gel pin you can get. This is a point three. I doubt I'll get that to focus on that. If I go super close, does it work? That doesn't work at all. That'll work. You can see how fine that is. Tiny, tiny. That's a point three millimeter. Pilot high tech C gel pin. All right, and then the other one I should point out that's a Twisby Diamond 580 ALR Prussian blue with the blue Twisby ink in it. Carol, do you have all my pens memorized by now? All right, that's the future log, and I have that set there. Now, the next two pieces that I want here are the books, my book list, books to read. And then I'm gonna leave that as a full two, two pages. And then this would be content ideas. And because my intention is to use these a lot, I'm giving myself, for the content ideas, I'm giving myself four pages before I start my June spreads. So I'm gonna be giving myself quite a bit of space there. I want the coloring different between those three on the headers. You had to restart your Mac. Is it an M1? <laughs> In my checklist of things I do before I start a stream, it's always restart first. Restart, turn off the Wi-Fi, turn on trip mode, kick on the Linux box. There's a whole list. I don't know. It's 30, 40 pages worth of, or 30, 40 items worth of stuff. All right, so we're going to go to, <laughs> you wish, <laughs> Mr. Michael Schmitz has an M1 Mac Mini. I think it's a Mac Mini. Yeah, Mac Mini. He's a fan, as you would expect. All right, future log. This will be books to read. And for books to read and content ideas, I'm going to be using purple for the headers simply because I want those to be differentiated from the blue that I'm going to be using for the longer term stuff. Keep my collar off the mic. Please. All right. Oh, that's right, Michael. I knew you bought one. 
if you didn't buy so many pins. That'll do it too. <laughs> I will actually migrate these over it at another time. What page is that? It would be two. And I know two, three, so four will be content ideas. All right, so books to read, and then this will be content ideas. Ooh, should I use the green on that? Green's always kind of hard to see, though. Well, not for me, though. It's easy for me. We'll use the green. These are both Twisby Ecos, if anyone's curious. I just about wrote Twisby. That's why I was pausing there. All right. So yes, both Twisby Ecos, custom ground nibs on those. All right, so content ideas. Now, I got that one. So that's four, five, six, seven. This is where we're gonna start with January. And I'm pretty sure I gotta check again the coloring that I use. Blue, purple, green. If my fingers would work. Yes. Blue, purple, green on that. I'm going to leave this open right here because <clears throat> I'll need to reference that. Twenty twenty one. Are we happy we're done with twenty twenty yet? What am I on? Page eight. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> It's a new strain of things. I think we're getting ready to start all over again. Just my opinion. I think we're going to start all over. Not certain, but I'm thinking. All right, now, the thing I did last time and have liked doing is I tend to put up here where the last month is so that I can reference it if needed. So in this particular case, where am I going? So this would be December 2020. And this is 174 on that notebook. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to do... Do I need to denote that somehow? Oh, you did a trade-in, mini for mini? That's a good idea. Then you're not spending near as much money on them. What did I say it was? 174, 1-174. That's all I'm gonna do. I know that's hard to see, but it's 1-174. That's how I'm doing that. And that works out really well, I think, just from the people I've talked to that do this sort of thing and do the, the new notebook migrations that seems to help a lot you got your first fountain pen funky <laughs> uh-huh welcome the people that i have given all right this one so this is my twisby diamond 580 this pen 
I have put in the hands of many, 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 many people. Also, Funky, you have to tell us what it is. You can't just tell us you got a fountain pen and then not tell us what it is. That's illegal. Just saying. But this di this Diamond 580, I've put in the hands of a number of folks, one of which is our good friend Mike Schmitz. I'm not going to say that this pen is the one that got him into that, but I know that it certainly helped in that process. <laughs> so... This pen, I know, and part of that is because this one is extremely smooth. You give people the right paper and the right pen, and it's hard to uh, it's hard to stay away from it. I think. <laughs> Thirty-one days in January, right? All right, Funky, don't leave me hanging. What pen did you get? My ruler is running into things here. You have three 580s. It's a solid pen. It is. The black one I have is a fine nib. The ALR is a medium. Uh, let's see. I got to get the days of the week. The first starts on a Friday. I should know this, but Stabilo Flow. If you've used Pilot G's, I don't know. Is it Stabilo? Stabilo? I don't know what it is. I'm going to look it up. Stabilo Flow. I don't know that one. Stabilo? Stabilo. I wish I knew. Probably won't know. Oh, that looks nice. I like that. That's cool. Here. This is what I'm looking at. That looks cool. That looks like it's super handy. Like... Super nice in the hand is what it looks like. That's cool looking. I like it. I assume it uses cartridges. The blue one at the bottom. Get back here. So that. That's cool. I like it. I do. I do, I do, I do. I'm a fan, Funky. Well done. Welcome to the club. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, it gets to be uh, a bit addictive. Once you get your mind around... The differences, it, it can get to be kind of hard to shift back. All right, I got to make sure I got this right. Friday. Concentrate or I'll get it wrong. So it ends on a Sunday. Yes. I got it right.
Ooh, kind of got into them. Not too concerned about that though. All right. I still find this really helpful. To put those lines there. And I do, this doesn't happen very often, but at the bottom here, I'll put a line just to indicate the end of the week. That's pretty common for me. All right, so there's that. Next page is the Franken log. Get my Twisby Eco going. And then I gotta repeat that. One of these days I'll figure out how to reuse that. It just seems weird to me to put it in the spine. Anybody got a stamp for this yet? So I don't have to do this. I can just stick it and be done. I wonder if I should do these as I go. Save me a little time, I guess. A big ink pad, yeah. Unless it was one of those that you like roll, that would maybe work. a little better on that one all right I'll fill that one in again later as well all right now these two this is where there's lots of lines we're doing these so I'm gonna start with this and I think the spacing on this I may slip up a bit because I am getting a little tight down here. I don't foresee adding three more things to this list in January, but I could easily see how I could also do that. So I want to give myself that space. So I'm going to put this line in. Did you really hunt one down? You did that, didn't you? All right, now I got to see. I got to see what you did. Oh, now that's interesting. This is what Michael is sending me. So that's interesting. But I don't think that would work for like straight up and down, would it? Oh, I suppose you can move those around. No, it would still need to be. Yeah, it's not quite. It's close, though. That is close. I'll give you that. That's for sure. That's not the scene I wanted. I wanted to go there. There we go. All right. Where's my line got to go? So I want that there. I 
should probably count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <sighs> Wait. Wait a second. Anybody else see what I just saw? I doubt it. Now that is not what I expected. Let me see if I can get this up here so you can see. All right, so this is my old notebook. The dots go all the way up to the top. Like there's another line of dots there. Whereas this one, the new one, does not have that line. You see that? So counting dots to put it in the same spot would be in a different, like it's one dot off. That is not what I expected to find. Did they change that? Does anybody know if Twisby changed that? Huh. That's fascinating. All right. So on the old one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots in, which would mean seven for this one. That's weird. I didn't expect to see that. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yours is the same, Michael? I would love to know if they actually changed that. Or if it's like a different design, a different setup. It seems weird. I'm gonna go somewhere there. I would think I would have noticed like some sort of a press release or something on that. I have no idea if I gave myself enough space here. Okay, the thing I always screw up, I have to put this on the dots instead of between the dots. Had just the right number there. All right. The nice thing about doing it this way is I've got two notebooks I can reference here. Here we go. <laughs> we make it easy. <laughs> All right. I don't have any that I'm adding on the the top side there. If I've got something close to a migraine, if I sleep in a different bed, if I've had wine, and if I have had wine, does it have sulfites in it? Did I consume any liquor? Which lately has been our aged eggnog. Which, I will tell you, is good stuff. But be careful with it. <laughs> 38 versus 39 dots vertically. 27 horizontally in both. So they did drop a dot off the top. 
That's interesting to me. I can see why they did it. I mean, it, it creates a bit more separation on the page. So I get that. But I like my dots. I think I would rather go all the way to the top. I think that's my preference. Exercise, let me tell you something. I was super excited about Apple's Fitness Plus system coming out. I had been doing a little bit of reading about what it, uh, what was going to be a part of it. So I was super excited about it. And Apple One came out. And when it came out, I immediately signed up for the trial of it and then they released the fitness plus so i immediately went to check it out and i couldn't install the app for it anybody know why <laughs> things i didn't expect i will say that Spoiler alert, I have since canceled my Apple One subscription. Nobody's got a guess? All right, so it turns out that I have the latest OS. Oh, Funky saw my tweet. There was a whole thing. I had this back and forth with Rosemary Orchard about it. And I, uh, I discovered that, no, I have an Apple TV that's compatible. Uh, I do not have an iPad that is compatible because I do not have an iPad at all. It is a part of the fitness app, Flying Bot, Flying, Flying, I'll say Flying. It is a part of the fitness app. Apple Watch is the trick here. It is a part of the fitness app. You cannot, well, you can start a workout without the watch, but you cannot install the fitness app without a watch. Unless you have had a watch paired with your phone, at some point you cannot start, or you cannot install the fitness app. It's not possible. So, since I don't have an Apple Watch, I can't install the fitness app on anything. So therefore, I'm not able to use Fitness Plus unless I get an Apple Watch, which I'm not doing. So, Apple One makes no sense to me because I cannot use it. Thanks, Apple. You lost some money from me over that one. All right, so now we're up to this tracker. I've done these enough now. I'm getting faster at them. So anyway, I was bummed by that. I really was pretty stoked about trying it. I mean, there's some of the yoga stuff I wanted to see. Yoga is kind of the where I feel I need to be from a exercise stance. I do um, raise your hand if you're into nerd fitness. Nerdfitness.com, I think. They have a like a body weight workout that I've been doing in the mornings. Well, when I'm doing them. Lately, that's been non-existent. 
when I do a workout in the morning, that's what I would do. But I was interested in using the Fitness Plus system instead of that. And uh, not anymore. Oh, I got to do the eight hour deal. This is my target line. Loic term has less dots. The Apple Watch is a bit bizarre. I don't make apologies to anyone who owns one. <laughs> Apple Watch, like, the design of it doesn't make sense to me. Like, can you see this? So, oh, see if I can get my wrist over there. So I use a Dan Henry chronograph. This is what I wear. And, like, when people tell me that I'm just cheap and I don't want an expensive watch, that's a $250 watch. So that's not the case. I'm a fan of watches. But if they were to make an Apple Watch that has that circle design and give me three buttons on the side... That I may be interested in, but I do not like that kind of squarish design. I think they should embrace the circle design on it instead of avoiding it. Just my opinion. It's the classic look and the timeless look, and that is my jam. Because I'm old school, apparently. Thus, Analog Joe. So yes, I make no apologies when I get on to people for, uh, <laughs> for, uh, what order do I do this in? For wearing an Apple Watch. Yeah, see, like, Michael's had one from day one. I get it. I get why people do it. It is just not for me. You guys know Josh Wrench. He's been on the stream before, and I've had some live convos with him before. Uh, he's a big Apple Watch fan, but he uses it for all the things they intend you to use it for and is pretty good about ignoring all the other aspects. Not 100%. Mike Schmitz is the same way. Like They're not 100%, so I will still, still give him grief. The Apple Watch has better software. Yeah, from what I've learned, yes. That's true. Honor Band 5. Backup as a Casio. You're going old, old school, and I like it. Self-winding watches. Those are nice. The mechanicals. I've looked at getting a mechanical before. I just can't stomach the $1,000 price tag on my wrist. Like, I'm all for quality. But that's a bit much for my blood. At the moment. Uh, what I'm doing here is this is my bedtime tracker. So what time did I go to bed and what time did I fall asleep? Uh, which one did I do? I do dashes on this one. There. Two to three hundred range. Thanks to the follow, Jazz. Your good watch is a mechanical. You don't wear it often as you try to keep it pristine. See, that's that's part of my issue. Like if I was to have a mechanical, I would want to I would want to daily that. Thus, like this one, I daily this one. The only time I take it off and put a different one on, which is a cheap 
I don't even know what it is. It might be a Casio. That doesn't sound right though. I don't even know. Timex. It's a cheap $10, $15 Walmart thing. That I wear when I'm in the wood shop running saws or you know doing projects around the house because I don't want to be painting and such with my nice watch on. I didn't check this link you sent me. Oh, I missed one. W. Danielle, you never got into the Apple everything way of life. There's nothing wrong with being like the Android PC side. Like I, my stream setup has a Linux box up here. I have, where is it at? Oh, I buried it. I have an Android phone that I use for a variety of things, namely to give me a way to use a phone without it being a phone. So I do use that. That's kind of nice. This was on the bullet journal subreddit, Michael. I missed that. Started your 2020 today. Realized you're sketching up. It's one row less been removed in newer journals people were complaining last year I wonder if it has to do with supply then the font is a little different too I noticed that now that I see that I I have noticed that that the font here on the page numbers is slightly slightly different I have not they're noticing oh they haven't noticed any difference in paper I would sure hope they don't change that <laughs> all right funky what am I looking at here designer posh watches what This is your favorite? Okay, I have to show this to everybody. This is what I'm looking at. I, wow, okay. See if I can read that. So if I'm looking at this correctly, tell me if I'm reading the time right. It's 7.02 and four seconds. Is that, am I reading that right? Or is it 724? Is that how that works? My second guess would be 724. Yes! For the record, I said that before you typed it in the chat. I know the delay thing is there. But I got that. What's the other... So then if you hit the button, does it go to time? Or the date? Because it looks like it's showing the time. That's total geek. Total geeky. <laughs> I am amazed that this exists, and yet I love it at the same time. Quartz movement. Oh, there's some others that are similar to that. That must be their thing, the one. There's so many, so many, so many watch styles out there for sure all right what have i got left here uh so i've got my habit tracker i've got my sleep stuff i've got to get my waiting for in here the dots were between oh i kind of like the dots in between though To see it now. It's a present from your wife. My old one has slashes, Michael. Or is that what you're saying? The old one had slashes, the new one has dots? Mine has slashes on both. Yeah, 
Yeah, these have slashes on both. Hmm. Interesting. People can get pretty bent out of shape over those nuances, though. All right. Remember, Memento Mori. Remember death. Also, remember bad days happen. Kind of morbid. I get that. But they are helpful. And then I like having this Bujo adjustments list here. Just in case. Okay, now what are you sending me? This is kind of fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like it. All right, just, just so everybody's in the loop. I feel like I used to have one like that at one point. That's That's kind of my thinking is I used to have that because people will always ask questions about that I'm guessing the price there is just because it's out of like it's not being made anymore what is Bujo Danielle uh, bullet journal bullet journal is a method of keeping track of life that's probably the cleanest way to say that bulletjournal.com there's also a book on it so it's a process of keeping track of things in pen and paper despite our crazy hectic world welcome by the way all right so here's my habit tracker here's my sleep tracker <laughs> so you knew what bullet journaling was just bujo was the one that was throwing you that's that's my interpretation of what just happened <laughs> or the initial draft of Cujo by Stephen King that works too <laughs> I love it Danielle <laughs> all right last page here tasks and projects back to the green twisby eco Again, I wish that color came through better on uh, on screen. Welcome, Danielle. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. I got to top off my coffee. I'm drinking coffee a bit later today than normal. All right. I think that's it for breaking in the new notebook unless there's something else you guys want to cover because I do want to shift gears here I'm a little later than I was expecting shifting gears over to uh, set app here so just as a review what I have is the future log books to read content ideas and January's setup okay and This is the way I'm setting up my future log. It's known as the Alistair method. So as I add items to my list here, I will put the day of the month that belongs to in here first, if it exists, and then put an X in the month that it corresponds to. Just a condensed way of seeing what's coming up. Then as I do my monthly migration, I look at all the items here, transfer it to the monthly list, and you're good to go. That's followed up with my list of books to read, which I will migrate off camera. Followed up with content ideas, videos, streams, webinars, and such. If you have something specific you want me to cover, watches maybe, um, that's an interesting thought. Uh, let me know. I'll put it here. 
And then I step into my January monthly spreads, starting with the traditional monthly log, that Franken log that I've come to love for doing recurring tasks, habit tracking, sleep tracking and mood and stress, some of my sub lists that I tend to keep track of, and then my longer month long task and project list. That's what that is. Lots, lots to do there, lots to cover. I should set those ribbons. So my first, which one do I use? Yep, the striped one is my, ooh, they're stuck. No! All right, I'll have to clip that. I don't want to ruin my ribbon. All right, so that'll be my first daily log. Set. And then I always put the solid one on my monthly log. There. The new one's ready to go. And my old trusty one will go on the shelf. Let's say about this spread, like, it's not a spread. It's just, like, it's, it's stuff everywhere. I just, I just really wanted to do that. <laughs> I've kind of been wanting to do that for a while. <laughs>